on today's Tech Help for Churches. Gift Ideas for the Podcaster Hello and welcome again to another episode of Tech Help for Churches. I'm your host, Paul Allen Clifford, and I want you to join the conversation. Go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact to contact the show. If you have questions, comments, snide remarks, whatever, just go ahead and leave those there with one of the means of communications that I have on that page, and we'll be happy to get to your comment at a later date. If you're watching live, the show does record live every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. UTC on churchtechcast.com. So right now, if you are watching live, I've got the chat window open, and I've got that open right in my field of view. So if you see me glance up like I am right now, that's me looking at the chat. So That's what's going on there. I'm going to endeavor to look directly at the camera so that you feel like I'm looking at you, not over your head, because I find that annoying. So let's get going. I originally had a different topic slated for this week, but it occurs to me that it's Thanksgiving week. And so that means two things, at least here in the U.S. Uh, Thing one Thing one is Thursday is Thanksgiving, and I wanted to go through a few things that I'm thankful for. And thing two is Friday after Thanksgiving is Black Friday, which is the traditional kickoff to the Christmas shopping season. So I thought that I would talk about some things that should you be on Amazon, and you can go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash Amazon to help out the show by using the affiliate link. Uh, it costs you no more money, but it gives me just a little bit of the cost of whatever you buy, 2 or 3%, not very much, but every little bit helps. If you go there, these are a few things that if you're buying for your church's podcast ministry, if you're buying for a podcaster in your life, these are things that either I use or I have heard other people that I respect use, and um, I'll have a list of those in the show notes that you can click on and just buy them directly. So this should save you a bunch of time in comparison shopping and all that craziness. So let me first off talk about the microphone. Now, this is the microphone that I'm using. So if you like what I'm using, I actually bought this to go with my DSLR, but I loaned my other microphone out to someone who has yet to return it. So I've just been using this for basically all these shows. So here, let me show you what it is. If you're watching the video, it probably got very, or listening to the audio, it probably got very loud. This is a shotgun mic, um, and it's a very inexpensive one. It is the Audio-Technica ATR6550, and that is what I'm using to record this show. But I'm not using it directly, so let me talk about some of the other pieces and parts that are going into my recording. Coming out of this microphone, I'm plugged into a Zoom H4, which is no longer made, but the new version is the H4N as in Nancy. And (coughs) that is a little compact, handy recorder. And if I was just doing an audio podcast, that's really all I would need. So basically you get a uh, an SD card. All I'm using is a one gig SD card because basically a CD is about 700 megs. So this is a gig. I'm recording it as a WAV file. So it's uncompressed, gives me all the quality, 
and then I can edit it and compress it down to MP3 later. For headphones, again, I'm talking kind of a beginner, I use the Sony MDR-V150s, and they're over-the-ear headphones. Technically, they're supra-aural as opposed to circum-aural, meaning they go on top of your ear as opposed to around your ear. Uh, earbuds would be intra-aural or into the ear. So these are the Sony MDR. V150s and they don't provide studio quality perfect sound reproduction but they're helpful so they're better than a lot than just the ones that came with your mp3 player or ones you got at the grocery store so that's what I would recommend on that now the other audio cable is coming out of the Sony H4n and going to a Griffin iMic. And I'm writing down notes, so I hope this arm that I have uh, is absorbing some of the sound so that you don't hear it every time I'm writing, but uh, if you do, that's why. And that's coming into my MacBook Pro. And my MacBook Pro is running, today I'm using Flash Media Live Encoder. I'm also using the Webcam Settings app. Webcam Settings for... Um, for this camera. In fact, here, let me bring that up because I'm not totally sold on the look. It looks a little washed out to me. So I'm going to bring that up and let's turn down the brightness just a hair. Maybe tweak the contrast. Oh, that's too much. Bring it back. So Yeah, that's. Oh. Yeah, too much. And. Yeah, I wonder if I should. Yeah, I think that's getting better. So I put brightness in the middle and I've just uh, put contrast just a little above the middle. By the way, I need to apologize. I do have a cold, so I might be sniffing a little bit, and I hate that. But anyway, I've got the Webcam Settings app going into Flash Media Live, Enco Live Encoder, and Flash Media Live Encoder is recording this and streaming it onto the website. Um, let me talk about my streaming host because they have uh, just rebranded and I'm really pleased with all that they offer. So they are. Oh, and my webcam is the IPEVO, IPVO point. To view. Now, I'm actually thinking about ordering a Logitech, and uh, I'll talk about that here in just a second. Uh, it looks, I've heard it recommended by like three different people who don't know each other, so that makes me think that it's worth buying, and it's about 40 bucks, so it's very inexpensive. So I'll talk about that in just a minute as soon as I get done with this. Uh, let's see here. I think it's mychurchlive.tv. Let me make sure. And <clears throat> all the things on Amazon are going to be affiliate links as well as the link to mychurchlive.tv. 
mychurchlive.tv. By the way, you might say, well, that's streaming. I don't need that. I'm a video podcaster. Well, let's talk about that because they also provide hosting for your video podcast. So as you're streaming, they're recording. And when you're done recording, you can set it to just podcast that immediately. Or you can set it to have a button that when you hit start, it starts recording. I've got it set up to record automatically. Um, And so that would go into your podcast feed, but it doesn't have to. Let's say you edit your show somewhat, and that's the one that you want to go on to your video podcast feed. Well, they have a place where you can upload that. So you can actually check a checkbox that says, hey, don't podcast this. Upload the new one, and then check the, yes, video podcast this. And so that's very helpful. And their prices are... $99 a month, which sounds like a lot of money, but it's unlimited live streaming, unlimited bandwidth, and uh, a Roku app if you want to set that up. So they've got just all these great things that they offer for very little money. And that's for churches that are up to 2,000 people in attendance. So that gets pretty much most of the churches. And churches that are 2000 to 4000 are 199 and then if you need more you can call them for that. So my church would actually need to call them because we're a little larger than that and we haven't always been. Uh, I've been at the church uh, about 12 years and when I started we were a little over 100 and I remember us thinking how are we ever going to get to 500? That's never going to happen. But it did. So That's just a slight aside. Yes, mychurchlive.tv. So let me write that on my list. Mychurchlive.tv is my host. Now, for audio hosting, you know that I use uh, libsyn.com. But I also recommend Blueberry. And Blueberry is spelled like the fruit, only without any E's. So B-L-U-B-R-R-Y dot com. And depending on your needs, it could be that the $5 plan from Libsyn is all you need. But if you want to go up from there, Blueberry is one that you should absolutely take a look at. <clears throat> so, that is um, kind of my basic equipment. The ATR6550, the Zoom H4M, the Sony MDR V150 headphones, the Griffin iMic, my MacBook Pro, the webcam settings app, uh, Adobe's Flash Media Live Encoder, which you only need if you're streaming, by the way, the IPVO, IPEVO.2 view webcam, uh, mychurchlive.tv streaming, and libsyn.com or blueberry.com. That's kind of the basics, but let's talk about some of the other ways that you can go. Now, I said basics. Let me drop out some of those pieces and just get down to the bare essentials. You can use a webcam. Let's say that you're video podcasting. You can use a webcam plugged directly into your computer. You can also use an external microphone, including something as simple as your headphones Uh, Here, I've got a set of iPhone headphones. Now, what's what's really recognizable about the iPhone headphones is they're white. That means they'll be very clearly seen. See, if I put them up against my shirt, they're very clearly seen on, on your webcam. Now, so 
what you might think about doing is getting a set of black ones like this. So these are still fairly obvious, but here let me stick this over my ear. That's the way I like to wear them. And in, and you'll see that while that's still clearly there, it's less obvious than the white ones. So even if I uncoil the white ones, because I know some people are saying, well, a coiled up white cord is... So, there we go. You can barely see the black one against my gray t-shirt. And the. I suppose if I was wearing a white t-shirt, that might be different. But just something to keep in mind. So I'm going to put that back there. So you could use just a headset with a microphone like this plugged into your camera, uh, plugged into your computer. One downside of that is um, a computer is an in anything box, right? So you can take a computer and you can do almost anything with it. You can make videos, you can make audio, you can make still graphics, you can write a novel, you can write a book, you can surf the web. You can do so many things and those are all governed by the software and so I mean there's a reason that in television production they tend to use a hardware video switcher because it is designed to do video switching it's not designed to surf the web so it's less likely to encounter problems because it's not made to do it with software it's made to do it with hardware so when you're recording an external recorder is really something that's much more likely to be stable than your computer now you might record a hundred shows and lose one so that's a one percent failure rate that's not bad until it's that one time and it seems like that it's always the hard interview to get it's always the the thing that you wouldn't dare ask someone to do over something like that that gets lost and i've heard horror story after horror story so it's always good to have a backup quick story yesterday sunday uh, i'm recording this on monday sunday we had a problem with one of our computers at our satellite campus where I serve. So we always have two computers going at all times for redundancy sake. And here's where it came in well. Uh, here's where things happened good because of that. We went to play a video. It started skipping. I bailed to the other computer and instructed the guy who was actually running it because I'm leading him that any videos need to come off of the secondary computer the one that we were using kind of as a backup and he could still put lyrics during worship up on the primary computer well it was laggy and slow so in between services I rebooted it that didn't seem to fix it. I shut it down all the way, unplugged the power cord just to be absolutely sure it wasn't getting any power. Started it back up, same problem. So we had a Saturday, or Sunday evening service. So what I did was I shut it down completely and let it rest. I didn't think that would fix it, but I didn't think it would hurt. One thing that rebooting a computer does, though, is it's a little stressful on the system, so that's why I don't want to do it too often. But that stress showed up in taking a long time to reboot. Once it finally rebooted, I thought, well, maybe the permissions are off because it's Macintosh, so it's kind of Unix-based and it has disk permissions and everything. So I went in to repair permissions, and there was a big thing on the disk manager utility that said, hey, this hard drive is failing. Copy everything off right now. So I did. And I took it to our IT guy for him to swap out the hard drive. So that should be swapped out before next Sunday. No harm, no foul. Everybody's happy. But that's why we do redundancy. 
because redundancy really matters. So if you're recording into your computer, I would suggest you get an external recorder, even if you never use it. Even if you never use the recording from it, just for redundancy, just to have it should you need it. And so that's why I use uh, an external recorder. In this case, the Zoom H4, but they the one that's currently made is the H4n. So if I was getting started and I just wanted to go basic, I think I would go with a, a good microphone. The uh, ATR6550 is adequate. I think uh, there is... Audio-Technica also makes one that is perhaps a little bit better. This is a shotgun mic. The one that they make is a handheld, and I'll put that in the show notes. That's recommended by uh, Dave Jackson at School of Podcasting and Daniel J. Lewis at the Audacity, the award-winning Audacity to Podcast Podcast. He'd love me to say award-winning. So since we've met and I consider him a friend, I'll uh, do that for him. So the microphone, the Audio Technica, is it M42? No, that's a camera mount. So that's not what's in my head. But I'll have a link to that in the show note. Is both USB and XLR. So you can plug that into your Zoom recorder, or you can re- plug it into your computer via USB or both. So that's kind of a helpful interface. So I think I would have a couple of places to record if you could afford it because a Zoom H4 is about $200. Uh, A good microphone. I don't think I would skimp on that. If you absolutely had to, you could deal with a headset microphone, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. And then please don't skimp on the hosting. I'm actually about to upgrade because I've been using some free alternatives and free is just too costly for me. It it does some things that I don't like. And one of the free hosting packages I have deletes shows after a while. Another free hosting package that I tried using renames the file. Another one re-encodes it, and they swear it's no different, but it is. And uh, another one uh, claims that they don't rename, but they do. So all those things are too costly for me, given how inexpensive additional hosting space at Libsyn or Blueberry is. So that's why I'm about to upgrade, and I really don't want you to skimp on it. So I want you to think of all these things in terms of how long you would pay someone on staff to use this equipment, okay? So let's say that you had a $50 microphone, like the one that I'm about to recommend to you once I can figure out what it is. You had a $200 recorder, that's $250. And you had uh, a $5 a month hosting. So for one month, you're looking at $255. That's, what, two days, three days worth of a person's salary? Almost nothing. And then the hosting is $5 a month. Just a few minutes of their salary per month. Again, almost nothing. It will cost you more to pay them to put something up on the hosting than it would cost for the hosting itself. So it's very inexpensive when you look at it that way. Don't look at it as, well, where am I going to find $100? That is a problem, and I acknowledge that in smaller churches that $100 is a lot of money. But think about that in reference to all the other places that you spend large sums of money and see if you can rearrange things a little bit. It could be that um, it's worth the trouble to really get the word out. 
So those are just my basic recommendations for getting your church up and running doing an audio podcast or a video podcast like this one. Remember, this is very basic. I'm just looking at the camera, and I've arranged my background on purpose. Uh, Every time I do a Hangout, people joke about this whiteboard that says churchtechcast.com, but it's effective. Let me tell you just one quick story about that whiteboard. It's not a whiteboard. It's a poster frame. I got it at Goodwill for 50 cents. I turned around the stock art that was in the front so that it had a white piece of paper on the background. And I'm actually writing on the plastic that covers the front of it. So it's not actually a whiteboard, but it works like a whiteboard. I got the markers from the dollar store, a pack of four for a dollar. So you don't have to go expensive to get all these things to work the way you want them to. Of course, there's a reason why professional stuff costs what it costs, and you need to do that uh, analysis, kind of a cost-benefit analysis, to use a business term, and decide if it's worth it. Because a lot of times it'll save you tons of time to use the better equipment, and over a year you'll be saving so much time in paying someone that it's really worth it. So uh, that's why, by the way, that I think that pastors should absolutely get the input of the people that are using the equipment instead of just deciding what equipment they should use. Because the people using the equipment might be able to tell you what to pay a little bit more money for and save a lot of time. So when you want the replay of the worship service up on Sunday, all of a sudden that can happen because you spend an extra $50 up front instead of skimping on the equipment, and now it can't happen until Tuesday or Wednesday. So that happens all the time that more expensive equipment saves you time, and time is life. So just remember that as you're going out and changing eternity. Until next time, I'm Paul Allen Clifford with Trinity Digital Media dot com.